once you impart knowledge, you become you become an expert of that knowledge. You just keep it to yourself and never become an expert. And everything we do, I tell my my colleagues and staffers also, if in the every line you go, if you do a good design, think of the beneficiaries. If you do a lousy design, think of the sufferers. I describe core values are like lighthouses. Even in stormy weather, they will always be there to guide you, navigate the navigate, help you towards your destination. They will always be there. Lucky in the sense that I may have been at the right place at the right time. And yeah. and somebody was guiding me up somebody up there. You should get out of the architectural box. Our education in the uh, colleges of architecture is very limited. They teach you about the professional, technical aspect of architecture, not the business aspect of architecture. That I had to learn it along the way. And I, I formally was educated in Harvard and, the, and the, the, the art of leadership of architecture, the business aspect of architecture, yeah. the Filipino skin. And in fact, we excel more outside our country. And because in our country, sometimes you must be born in a silver school. They look at your family name before you get recognized. So mm. you, it, it's usually the case that you can recognize a book and come back. Mm. And the Filipino can. Yeah. Architecture, we were taught, is the art and science of building. It's mm -hmm. more than that. It's the art, the science, the technology, the business, the economy. Of business. Yeah. I think I may have been blessed for helping others, getting out of the architectural box of the clients or the end users. It's not the people paying me with their uh, our fees, but it's the end user. And do yeah. not be afraid. Fear not to stick to your principles. Even right. e even even abroad, I stick to my principles, and I don't take all the projects that come our way. If it violates our principles, we, I tell our clients, let's just agree to disagree on this project. You may want to consider us at the next project. That we are planning progress, mm -hmm. developing opportunities for others. It's not mm -hmm. us. Planning progress, developing opportunities for and others. And, you know, make sure that 10 years, 20 years from now, they look back and say, thank God I met this person. Thank God. I heard him speak for two hours or something, no? Ito, ar ito architect, ang ganda na tanong ni Christian Bondo. Ang tanong niya is, uh, how would you know if you're on the right path? With so many things and opportunities around you, is there any tip you could give to assess yourself if you are in the right path? Do you, did you ever feel that I am in the right path? Does it, did it come to you? It's, you have to do some deep discernment. Pray to the Holy Spirit. You do some discernment and have alternative option. If I do this, what will be the effect of what I'm doing? If I if I do nothing, what will be the effect? Sometimes when I do a decision tree, the first is do nothing, as is where is. The second is do do optimum, and the third is do maximum. Even in our architectural design or urban planning, I tell my clients that do nothing, do minimum, do maximum, or a combination of all. And mm -hmm. of course, when you're a family man, you have to consult your you have to consult your, your wife and your children because they, they will always be part of what you decide on. So prayer helps very much and put it in writing. The do a SWOT analysis. The strengths, the weaknesses, the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats of your decisions. Mm -hmm.